Imagine a spacecraft weighing a whopping 570 kilograms in the size of a fridge, hurtling through space at a mind-blowing 6 kilometers per second before smashing into an unsuspecting asteroid on September 26, 2022. This historic event, launched aboard the iconic fossil fuel-powered Falcon 9, was a long-awaited response from the dinosaurs themselves, 66 million years after their devastating extinction. With the impact equivalent to three tons of TNT, the awe-inspiring footage of this collision is now available for all to see. This remarkable experiment marks one of NASA's most critical missions yet, as it provides invaluable data and insights that could potentially prevent a similar fate befalling humanity. The asteroid we struck Dimorphos is 160 meters in diameter, much smaller than the 10 kilometer wide asteroid that exterminated the dinosaurs all those years ago but large enough to unleash over 300 megatons of energy if it collided with Earth six times more powerful than the most powerful nuclear weapon ever used. In the weeks since, scientists have been studying the results, calculating how effective our first asteroid redirection test was. However, the work that went into this mission far extends the last month of scientific study, for years, scientists and engineers carefully planned which asteroid to hit, how to hit it, and how to confidently and quickly measure the effect of the collision. To understand the achievement of the DART mission, let's dive into the engineering and physics of its planet defense mission. The DART spacecraft itself hosted no scientific instruments designed to be a low-cost spacecraft with just the tools it needed to complete its mission cameras to spot its target star trackers to navigate through space, a propulsion system to direct it toward its target, antenna systems to speak with Earth, and an onboard computer whose software has its roots in military missile technologies. However, DART did release a small Italian-made spacecraft designed to record the collision, giving us this footage showing a massive plume of debris being ejected from the asteroid on impact. The Falcon 9 rocket did the majority of the work in directing DART toward its target Dimor. This was a unique target, chosen for a very important reason. It's a moonless, a tiny moon orbiting the larger asteroid Didymos. DART's camera gave us a glimpse of Didymos as it sailed by at a breakneck speed, closing down the remaining 920 kilometers in just two and a half minutes. It computed and adjusted its trajectory using hydrazine thrusters, guiding the spacecraft to a head-on impact with the moonlight. In these final moments, DART shut down its thrusters, allowing the camera to take clear images of its impending doom and giving us a clear picture of the rock we just obliterated 11 million kilometers away. So why this rock in particular? There were countless asteroids orbiting the Sun. However, in order to study the results of impact, we need a specific kind of asteroid. First dimorphic Earth was passing close to Earth, passing by at 11 million kilometers at the time of impact. Track down more folks and have confident predictions of where the asteroid is going to be at any given point in time. This allowed us to choose an optimal window for collision. Models showed that on October 4, 2022, the asteroid would be at its closest approach for the next 40 years. The next time it would be this close to Earth would be 2062. This was the perfect opportunity. However, we struck it a week early because the asteroid would be at its brightest to us at its closest approach, allowing us to better observe the results of the collision. This is the next reason this asteroid was chosen. The goal of the double asteroid redirection test was to redirect an asteroid with just enough force to change its trajectory by a marginal amount. Enough to avoid a collision with Earth. A change of just 1% could be enough to avoid a catastrophe. But here lies the dilemma for scientists. How do we measure such a small change in trajectory of an object 11 million kilometers away? Even the footage from a spacecraft near the collision is not much to go off. Confidently measuring an impact with an asteroid orbiting the Sun would take years as we need to measure multiple orbits to assess the differences before and after the impact. 
Instead, scientists turn to binary systems for answers. There are systems of asteroids where one smaller moonlets orbits a larger asteroid. All we need to know is that we change the velocity of a moving rock in space. It doesn't matter if it's orbiting the sun or orbiting another rock. However, not any binary system would make this experiment feasible. It is essential that we can measure the effectiveness of the crash from Earth. For this, the orbiting moonlets should have an eclipsing path, meaning that viewed from Earth, it would pass in front of and behind the asteroid during its orbit. The light reflecting from these two asteroids that we see here on Earth appears as a single point of light. And each time dimorphic passes in front of Didymos that light dims using sensitive Earth-based telescopes. We have timed these patterns to measure the orbit of Dimorpheus at 11 hours, 55 minutes. Using these same techniques, we can measure the change in orbit time morphosis is only visible from the southern hemisphere. So NASA's reserve time on telescopes located in Chile, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand joining the Earth-based telescopes. Webb and Hubble were also used to image the asteroids at the time of impact. Of course, to achieve all this, we first needed to hit the asteroid. That was no easy feat. The asteroid was too far away to manually direct the spacecraft. There would be a lag of 1.5 minutes at 6 km per second. A lag this large would have the spacecraft travel over 540 kilometers before receiving instructions when trying to hit a target. Only 160 meters in diameter looks like this required an autonomous navigation system. The spacecraft was loaded with a camera attached to a small, 20 centimeter wide telescope and circuitry. No more powerful than that of a PlayStation 1. Every second it would take a picture and calculate the thrust needed to stay on course, working very similarly to visual guidance software used in military applications like the Javel and Missile Dart used 12 directional thrusters to hit the small dim. Moonless Dash was also equipped with the next generation of ion thrusters. Next, C, which is three times more powerful than NASA's previous generation. In conclusion, the DART mission successfully hit an asteroid to redirect its trajectory, providing valuable data to prevent a potential catastrophic collision with Earth. The engineering and physics behind the mission were carefully planned and executed, 